and greetings and salutations, dear friends. Technicals Tinkers here, back at it, checking in on our 3D print operation for today. I'm just a regular guy. I got interested in 3D printing because I like making stuff. And so I'm trying to print things, sell them on the internet, documenting the process along the way. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, follow along that process, have a good time with me, do so now. So what have I got on the plate? So if you've been following the vlog sort of thing, I had a couple prints that were active. We're gonna do a couple more. Uh, let's check in and see what I got here. So over here on the A1, if you recall, I was doing this uh, fortune chair. So this is the thing that the other creator, let's put a thumbnail of his video here. Uh, the other guy printed, he made it life size, but he printed it like on bamboo machines and a bunch of pieces and glued it together. That's too much work. I'm gonna print mine on the Orange Storm Giga, this giant printer over here. That way I can print it in one big go. But I wanted to do a, uh, a test version here with supports to see how it came out. Now I know it's not gonna translate one for one. 0.4 bamboo to a uh, one millimeter Elegoo, it's gonna be a little different, uh, but I wanted to check that out. So let's pop this sucker off and see what we got. I used the Sunlu Rainbow PLA <clears throat> that I got from Sunlu. Thank you again, Sunlu. Check them out, link in the description below. You know who Sunlu is. Just buy some, you know it's good filament. So let's pop this off, this beat you plate. I tell you what, man, no issues with adhesion out of that and no issues with over adhesion either. So it's a little sticky, so you have to kind of, it takes a little bit more sometimes pop it off and I am a little uh, scared about marring up the plate because I'm on the smooth side. You can see here there's like a spot where I was trying to get some off and I'm just gouging at it and it ended up marring up the plate a little bit but it's not too bad. Uh, overall very happy with this. I'm not sure I like the blue color really. <laughs> I might, I might uh, try to get one of those bamboo super tacks uh, just because I like the color a little better. This this shade of blue always seems like cheap to me. I don't know. I don't know what it is. If anybody else has that sort of neuroses or aphasia or something or whatever it is, you see a color and you just think that's cheap. Uh, let me know in the comments below. All right, and Giga time. Let's see what we got here on Mr. Giga. We've got our second plate, our faux weight plate. So we're gonna take this off and kind of show the how little post-production is involved with this thing. Beautiful pull, plate still, oh yeah, plate still perfectly lined up. So let's take uh, these things back in the office and take a closer look. To, to demonstrate like why this is, I think is such an ideal print is like, cause you can see, I just pulled this off the plate. It's got brim on it. Uh, and maybe there are some areas that are a little stringy like right here. So maybe it's worth, you know what? That's what the vlog's good for, right? We're doing it live. Let's, uh, let's destroy it. And it is just that easy. All right, and so for the brim here, the brim's on there a kinda, I'm gonna take off like the, you know, the main part here. Uh, but I got my little deburring tool. I'm sure most 3D print people have one of these. Just kind of run it around the edge here. Probably, you know, a couple passes just to kind of give it that false bevel that I was looking for. I mentioned that in the video yesterday. I probably need to change the blade out on this thing. I've never changed it. I don't know, I got a bunch of different blades. Uh, but just running this down, it's great for brim, especially on these big prints where the brim is, you know, thick and heavy. Just run it down through here and we are peachy keen. Uh, ready to, I mean, it's ready to go. Except for, I could sell it, you know, just with without the letters popping, but I kind of want them to pop, looks a little better. So I've just got this little sort of acrylic pen here. I've got an oil-based Sharpie, like a white Sharpie that's like, a, it's an oil pen. I think it's for touching up trim and things like that. But that's all the way out in the building. And you know, I don't want to walk 45 seconds to uh, make a, a better product. So I'm just gonna use this acrylic one here and it works just fine. I did worry initially about the bleed through because you know, the paint gets down into the lines and it wicks. It's a, I believe it's referred to as capillary action. It's how plants get water up the stems. Uh, <clears throat> that kind of happens a little bit, but as long as I stay on top, I'm pretty good to go. Additionally, like with plates, I mean, if you've been in the gym, you know plates, plates look good for about a day. And then, you know, people drop them and bang them up and clank them against other things and they get all kind of screwy. So I don't think anyone's gonna have like a real discerning eye on that kind of thing. 
Plus it's black and white. It's literally the highest contrast color combo that exists. And so I don't think that's gonna be too much of a concern. And you can see how fast this is going, um, you know, doing this in real time. You know, I've been thinking a lot about, because it's been like a couple episodes now and basically every episode since the beginning where I'm kind of like gradually coming to an increased realization about, you know, I keep talking about, oh, there's not enough money in 3D printing, it's not worth the time, whatever and whatever. Um, you know, this is something that is sustainable. I can, I can print this and sell it and also make videos and do all the other things that I want to do with that really without any issue whatsoever because this is just so it's just going so easy and so quick now whether or not people will buy it i don't know i haven't priced this out yet i do know it takes about about a spool and a half of filament you know about 1500 grams to do it at least at the infill that i've got it set at i hope i didn't screw that a up and you can see especially here on the camera you can see as the light hits it you can see the infill through it because that's a big uh, top shelf Maybe an extra top shelf layer on future ones. That's probably not a bad idea because you can see the infill showing through. But again, this is kind of a semi-utilitarian-ish product. It's like, I don't know that fine detail is really the point here because it's like a dummy, it's a dummy weight. Uh, it's a gag. It's for people to, you know, faux flex or whatever. And, you know, maybe there are people out there that want to like do that not as even as a gag you know people like to flex on Instagram and show that they're lifting a lot of weight that that's not really the amount of weight that they're lifting and if you've been to any modern gym that uh, zoomers go to these days uh, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that no one goes to the gym for uh, health or fitness or anything like that it's it's completely about socializing it's completely about flexing it's completely about showing off to the world that you're at the gym versus actually getting the benefits of the gym. I don't know that I'm any different than that. So you can see that there, plate one, plate two, that's 90 pounds right there. Holy cow, look how strong I am. Another thing too, we did have a bit of a catastrophe. This is the Sunlu uh, maple wood filament that I showed off in the Sunlu video. The spool fell out of the S1 and cracked the spool open. I thought like, oh, Sunlu's making a, reusable spool. Actually, you know what it is? Huh, look, they lock together. Just like a, a bamboo spool. It did break. I didn't know they did that. Well, it, why'd it fall out of the S1? You'll notice the S1's not there anymore. Don't tell FL Sun, I dropped it. I didn't have it on video. I was moving it out to my building and uh, it does weigh 90 pounds, which, you know, I'm super strong. I, you know, I just lifted those two plates with, with fingers. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's heavy, uh, but it's also quite large. And so I'm trying to grab it. I can't grab it by the handles because I'm not nine feet tall. Well, I am nine feet tall, but you know, I'm not that tall. Uh, so I have to bear hug it. And then when I bear hug it, I'm squeezing it to my chest. And then I'm trying not to, if I, if you got it b squeezed to your chest, you're not really able to put it down, right? You have to let it kind of slide, <laughs> slide down. Uh, and so I was kind of down here on the floor and kind of wiggling and I'm trying to describe, it would have been better if I was videoing it. Uh, it fell and it fell on its side, not too bad, but it did cause the spool to fall out and crack open. So um, I did a calibration on it and we're about to start a print on it. <laughs> and so I'm hoping everything checks out. I looked it over, it looks fine. Uh, and you know, that's a good torture test. How many channels that got an FL Sun S1 Pro uh, dropped them? and then ran them. You see, that's a good test. That's why you're watching my channel, because you know no other channel is gonna put it through that kind of torture. Pulling the supports here off of our fortune chair, came off crispy clean as I expected on the bamboo. Will the Giga do that? I don't know. Supports start acting a lot wackier when you get up to those bigger nozzles. But this is our fortune chair, so this is, pro this is gonna be our next print on the Giga, full-sized, and you know I think I'm gonna be able to get away with it. Now, I was thinking about it, when I downloaded this model, got it off Maker World, it stood up like this. And that's a lot of chair for just these two little points of contact. The benefit being is that you don't need any other supports uh, other than right here and here. I don't even think it called for supports up there. But if it didn't, that's a, that's a complete overhang. That's 100% overhang or 0%, however you want to look at it. Uh, if it tries doing that, it would have to bridge. And then if the bridging didn't turn out absolutely perfect. Once the chair sat down, that's like a, a place that people can easily see. 
So my thinking was one of two directions. One, print it how it's gonna be because this won't need supports obviously. And the only area that would need supports are here and here like I printed it. Um, and then just deal with the bottom of the chair or redesign the model to where the bottom of the chair isn't the same as the top. It's not reversible, it's just kind of more complete. I think that detracts from the actual chair itself, but it would make it to where I don't need supports and I, it would, you know, it'd be more stable when people sit on it. Additionally, I started thinking about the layer lines because of like the weight, the load is here, the lines really should run this way because you don't want separation. If the lines ran like this, then they'd be more apt to separate as the model gets pulled apart. So let me know what you think about that in the comments below, the behavioral properties of this. I was thinking too, like, you know, run it really, really hot. That way uh, the plastic melts together more. I'm not sure about that. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be risky uh, either way we go, no matter what we try to dial in because a lot of the business end of this isn't gonna really happen until halfway through. And I'm gonna to have to print this with heavy infill because if I'm putting all 200 pounds of me on this, I don't want it to fail. And if I end up do selling it shh, somewhere, I certainly don't want it to fail for anybody else. So the next thing is kind of like a blast from the past. If you remember way back when I first started doing this, like that's my office in there. I had this coat closet that's just outside my office and this is where I used to run the bamboo P1P. So I had the AMSs up there on that shelf. And then I had the printer here. I put this shelf in, I chased in some power, stole some power from somewhere else to run it. Uh, but ultimately I wanted all my printers in the same spot. So this closet has been unused thus far. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point here, uh, but I wanted more storage because all my storage in here, this cabinet, this cabinet, all these cabinets, these cat, they're all full. They're mostly full of bullshit. Like this is just, just hundred percent computer parts all the way through. Uh, I think three or four of these cabinets are just 100% computer parts, just 3D prints, stationary, other kind of stuff. Because again, I don't like clutter. I like to put everything in a cabinet, but I'm running out of room. So my thinking was, all right, I want to put storage in this closet. But I don't have, uh, I have wire racks. I have extra wire racks, which is what I'm going to do. But the brackets for the wire racks over here, those are like, I believe they're like $10 at Lowe's for a two pack. They're way overpriced. Okay, they are not $10. They are uh, a quarter of that price. <laughs> so a two pack of these shelf brackets is uh, $5.48. But I need content and Lowe's is like, you know, a little bit of a dry, I gotta go out today anyway. So I'll probably end up buying, <laughs> let's just pretend they're $10. Okay, let's pretend they're $10. So what I did is I went ahead and downloaded one of them and I'm gonna print it out on the S1 Pro. I say, you know, uh, there may come a, a time where I really, really need these on like say a Sunday morning or something, Lowe's isn't open. So I'm gonna use this, uh, this nylon carbon fiber to do it because shelves need to be sturdy. And I mean, PLA would work, PETG would actually, would certainly work, uh, but why not? Let's overkill it. So let's go out there and get that print started. All right, so this is the T1 Pro here. That's the S1 Pro. I noticed the S1 Pro too. The S1 Pro is uh, similar to the similar to the Flash Forge in that it it burns the extra filament when you go to unload it. You just snip it off and it pushes through the remaining amount. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up this nylon. I'm touching it with my bare hands. Uh oh, no fun times for me today. A couple things I have noticed about it. Uh, there's like a little ridge where the PTFE tube contacts like another. Uh, like a connector. Uh, so it can kind of get hung up a little bit there. Also, you need to move the print head down in order to get it to snake through and make its way into the extruder correctly. Also, I noticed this fiber on filament. Man, it's brittle. Um, I don't know if that's because it is, you know, it did absorb moisture or something. See, right now I can't, I, I'm trying to send it and it's just not making it so. If I try to take this, ooh, the end of this filament here, because you know, it's kind of a little bit curved and I'd usually, for any other type of filament, I'll try to straighten it out a little bit, but if I do that, boom, snaps. So I guess that's because maybe it's wet, I'm not sure. Now I dried this for many, many days, but I'm not sure because it's been out for a couple days now in just the room. I don't know if it absorbed a lot of, yeah, I can't make it in there, so. I'm gonna have to investigate. So this is the inside of the machine. You can see this little P 
PTFE tube. It contacts, it comes out of the heated chamber and goes through here. I guess it's the run out sensor. And this seems to be straight. Doesn't seem to be any issue there. It's just, it's just connecting. It's just hitting the, uh, the little edge trying to make its way through. So let's try it again at a different angle. So my next solution is going to be to, um, I'm looking at the, my monitor here, <laughs> trying to like see if I can do this without looking. All right, so I made it through, trying to load up the filament. I'm gonna see if it bites. And again, I'm not much of a fan of uh, having to put glue on sheets here, but you know. Oh, don't touch that nozzle, baby. I got real close to it. I am going to let that run, hopefully no issues there. Uh, and then we'll come back and check on it probably tomorrow. And I suppose my final task for today, I did buy all the extra sh extra shirts so I can just wear my technicals uniform every single day, every single minute of every single day. So that way if, uh, if I need to pick up and start recording, I can do it without having to worry about trying to find my uniforms. <laughs> I'm gonna work on that today as well. Uh, again, with the shelf bracket, it's more along the lines of like, I just kind of like being able to print stuff around the house versus you know going out and buying something. Uh, so maybe I'll print a couple of those. I'll probably buy the rest at Lowe's because I have to get like, uh, I don't know, 12 of them. I'm putting a lot of shelves in there. Uh, but it is nice to know that I have that capability and to demonstrate to other people too, like maybe they don't have a Lowe's nearby or maybe they cost more at their Lowe's or maybe they've just got a whole bunch of filament and you know why not just print off a whole plate of them versus paying Five, uh, you know, five fifty for a two pack of those. If I have to buy five of those, that's like twenty five, thirty bucks. Uh, and you know, I think the total amount of filament that that needed was maybe like forty grams or something like that. It's not a lot. It's certainly a lot cheaper to three D print them. Uh, I'll probably buy them just out of convenience and because I'm gone today. But uh, overall, the option does exist. You can certainly save a lot of money with three D printing. So it's more of an exhibition in that regard. Gonna work on the fortune chair. Gonna work on uh, some of the skulls. Getting some of those tuned up and going again probably get back into printing the dab stations. Let me know what you think about any and all of this in the comments below. Be sure to like the video because it's the nice thing to do and subscribe for more content like this. I'm The Technicals. See you next time.